Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing field extensions. Okay, so we're just in the process of discussing the rigorous definition of a field extension. So the rigorous definition of a field extension is that it's a triplet. It consists of a, uh, well, firstly a small field, then a larger field, and then a mapping that maps the smaller field onto a subset of the larger field. Now this mapping needs to be injective, it needs to be one-to-one, -one, but it is not going to be onto because this larger field uh, is bigger, basically, than this uh, smaller field here, okay? So we're only going to map uh, this uh, smaller field onto a subset of this larger field. And then what's going to happen is that uh, this um, smaller field is going to be isomorphic to that subset which it's mapped onto uh, within this larger field. Now, the strict name for a mapping like this, which is mapping a um, field, or indeed a ring, because all fields are rings, onto another field, but indeed it's a ring, uh, and it's mapping it onto a subset in an injective fashion, uh, and uh, the mapping uh, obeys these two properties here, and that's called a ring monomorphism, okay? So, strictly speaking, a field extension consists of two fields, a small field and a large field, with a ring monomorphism between the two of them. Okay, so this mapping is a ring monomorphism, but you should think of it as an isomorphism, where um, it's mapping this um, field, this smaller field, onto a subset of the larger field, okay? And if you view it as that, this mapping then is a uh, monomorphism, uh, sorry, is an isomorphism. Okay, right. Uh, now, as I say, this isn't the uh, definition, well, this isn't the interpretation that we'll use most of the time. Often when people say uh, field extension, they just mean the bigger field. So often people will just think of this smaller field as actually sitting within the bigger field. Here we thought about them as separate fields with a mapping between them, but often people will just think of this one as actually being within there, and then thinking of this one as just basically extending uh, the large, the smaller one basically, okay, in, let me just find the picture that I drew for this, in this sort of fashion here, i.e. you're just adding on extra elements and then extending the two Cayley tables for addition and multiplication. Okay, so often when people say the field extension of Q, they really just mean the bigger field. So people will often use uh, field extension to mean the bigger field. Okay, right, the final thing we want to do is just make sure that there is actually a solution to this equation, x squared minus 2x uh, minus 1 in this uh, bigger field, okay? And there should, of course, be two solutions, because as soon as you have one solution, then you must have the other one, because, of course, it's going to factorise into linear factors. Okay, now this polynomial equation still makes sense in this bigger field, because we can view it as containing this smaller field. So all of these elements, uh, 2 and negative 1, uh, they're all within this larger field. Okay, so my claim is that the two solutions are uh, 1 minus the square root of 2, okay, and also 1 plus the square root of 2. Okay, so these are both symbols in this larger set, and let's see now that they are solutions to this equation. So, if we take 1 minus the square root of 2, square it, okay, and then subtract off 2 times 1 minus the square root of 2, and then subtract off 1, we should now get 0, basically, and of course the equation was that this needed to equal 0. Okay, so let's make sure of that. So, 1 minus the square root of 2 times 1 minus the square root of 2 is 1 minus the square root of 2 squared. Uh, so, let's do this. So, we get 1 times 1, which is 1. We get plus 2 from the minus the square root of 2 times minus the square root of 2. Okay, so that gives us plus 2 there. Then we get minus the square root of 2, and then another minus the square root of 2 from here. So we get minus 2 lots of the square root of 2. Okay, so this overall gives us 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. We're then subtracting off 2, 
and adding on 2 times the square root of 2 and then subtracting off 1. Okay, now we've subtracted off 2 from here, that gives us a 1 here. Subtract off another 1, uh, that gives us 0. So we get 0 in the first term, and then we have 2 subtract off 2, and therefore we get 0 in the second term as well. Okay, so this does indeed satisfy the equation that it reduces it down to the additive identity. Okay, right. Uh, now we want to make sure that the other one is also a solution, so let's put in 1 plus the square root of 2, so we need 1 plus the square root of 2 times 1 plus the square root of 2, minus 2 times 1 plus the square root of 2, and then subtract off 1. Okay, so we'll start off with this squaring here, so if we multiply these two together, we'll get 1 for 1 times 1, we'll get plus 2 for the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, then we'll get plus 1 times the square root of 2 plus another 1, so we'll get plus 2 times the square root of 2. We'll then get subtract off 2, and also subtract off 2 times the square root of 2, and then subtract off 1. Okay, and you can see that these two are going to cancel to give 0, and these two are also, well, these four are also all going to cancel. So again, this will give uh, the additive identity back again. So, here is the basic concept of a field extension then. The intuitive concept is that we are building a bigger field, we are adding on more elements into our set, extending the Cayley tables for addition and multiplication, okay, uh, and the hope is that in this bigger structure we will now uh, have solutions uh, to the equation that originally we didn't have solutions to. So this is the idea of a field extension, although that we've seen the rigorous the rigorous definition of a field extension, which is written k over q like that, or also k um, set, uh, colon q like this, that the rigorous definition is it's this triplet where you have a, a ring monomorphism connecting the smaller field to the bigger field, okay, and then the bit smaller field and the bigger field are both part of the field extension, okay. Um, but as I say, the intuitive concept is that you start off with a small field and an equation that you cannot solve. You then add on more elements, create a bigger field, and hopefully in this bigger field you're going to um, have solutions to that equation.